Good morning, brothers and sisters. Now, today is the last devotional for the year 2021, and I was thinking about what would be a relevant topic to share. Now, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And you know this is from John 10, 10 b. It's a great promise. In fact, the word abundant in Greek means to be full, to be overflowing, to live up to the brim, if you will. You know? And that's really God's intention for us. But I'd like us to turn our attention to Ecclesiastes. Now, many of you know that Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon, who tried to find that abundant life for many years in the world without God. He sought it through extravagance. Solomon did everything in excess. For example, he didn't just marry five wives, he married 700 wives and 300 concubines were on the side. He pursued the mastery of things like architecture, botany, music, dance, you know, and, and he was famous for his uh, supernatural wisdom that was given to God, uh, given to him by God. And he was very wealthy. But everywhere Solomon looked, under the sun, he came up with nothing. And this overflowing, abundant life to the brim escaped him. He said in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2b, all is vanity. And in verse 3, what does man gain by all the toil at which he toils under the sun? Everything I've tried and done under the sun is vain. Now, throughout most of the book, Solomon wrote about his experiences, his observations of ending up in dead-end streets and disappointing expressways without God. By the time we get to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Solomon is now an older man who has returned to the Lord. And I think it's appropriate for this last devotional. Let me read verses 7. Actually, it's from 7 to 10, but for now, I'll just read verse uh, 7 and 8. Light, light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. I know, right? It's poetic. Verse 8, So if a person lives many years, let him rejoice in them all, but let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. Solomon uses the word light to speak about the good and enjoyable days, the days when everything goes by smoothly, where there's blessing. And he contrasts it to the many dark days of darkness, where there's struggling, there's suffering and pain. The Bible is always realistic. Life will comprise of a mix of good and bad. You cannot say this season is all good or it's all bad. There will always be a mixture of good and bad, ups and downs and sweetness and bitterness. Whether you are saved or not, life will be like that. Now remember Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 5 that the sun and the rain will be given to both the, the just and the unjust. And in that Sermon on the Mount, our Lord Jesus makes an, a distinction between the believer and the unbeliever. And the distinction is this, that you and I as Christians, we know that God, who is in control of the world, is for us and not against us. And all the plans of our Father God are good all the time and God has a purpose to accomplish in our good and in our bad. So while I may wonder what's going on during my difficult days, I know that God is in charge. With that knowledge, I can rest in His love and in His sovereignty. For the unbeliever, he does not know God and he attributes good days to good luck and bad days to bad luck. It's luck or coincidence they say, not the purpose of God. Because the unbeliever does not know God as his heavenly father, during the bad days, he feels especially alone as he despairs. He doesn't know the purpose behind all the trials. 
Solomon writes that life will not be easy. There will be some bumps along the road. But a setback should, cause you to th should not cause you to think that God has stopped loving you or that He doesn't care about you anymore. Because none of those things are true. Romans 8 to 28 And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. All things, good or bad, will work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. Now let's look at Ecclesiastes 11 verse 7 again. Light is sweet and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. Solomon had ex enjoyed extravagant and the very diverse kinds of amusements and entertainment. But he says here, as an old man, he says we must appreciate the most simple pleasures of life. Light is sweet, he says. So enjoy the sunlight. Enjoy the moonlight. They are gifts from God. And who hasn't found sunset stunning or inspiring. I always see on Instagram people taking photos of sunsets or sunrises. And it can be the sunset that's observed from your window. In fact, in Amokyo, in our office, from our window we can see always a very beautiful orange, you know, red sunset. There is no need for us to go to Jeju Island or Hawaii Island to enjoy sunsets. Every sunrise and sunset is a free gift from God to you, to bring delight to your heart, to bring a smile to your face. Now, isn't that a great way to start the day and to live life? You don't need a plane ticket at all. God has blessed your life. Light is sweet. So don't be a pessimist like some people who start the day wondering, how bad will this day be now? Will it be worse than yesterday? Or will tomorrow be worse? They focus on the darkness in their lives more than the abundance of light that God has given them. There's a little book called The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. And that book challenges us to remain focused on God during an, while you are doing an everyday task or chore, whether it be washing the dishes or fixing a shelf. Even in the most mundane of places, we are to be grateful and joyful for simple pleasures. Because verse 8 reminds us that we are to rejoice in all the days of our lives. And if we do not know God, this life with its many, many dark days will be vanity. will end up being just a meaningless life without an eternal perspective. And Solomon then goes on to say in verse 9, Rejoice, O young men, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes, but know, you can do all that, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. For the younger listeners here, you must rejoice and you must not get jaded. Enjoy the youth that God has given you with, because there is great opportunity during your youth. You know. And notice the phrase says, days and not years of your youth. So they, are not, they will not go on forever. They're just days and live responsibly. Don't forget that you will have to answer to the Lord for all you do with all the freedom and all the energy and joy you have now. And now verse 10a, remove vexation from your heart. In other words, get rid of anger, get rid of frustration and resentment. I know some people who each time I talk to them, they are frustrated about something or another. The wise King Solomon in his old age says, enjoy your days, especially when you are young, but be responsible because one day you stand before God. Life is not always going to be easy. It's not always going to go your way and things and people around you will be difficult. But as believers, let's trust that God is in charge of 
every day and even the difficult days. Your Heavenly Father watches over you and is sovereign. So don't live your life frustrated and angry when things don't go your way. Put vexation away from your heart and your mind. And verse, the second part of verse 10, put away pain from your body. In the King James Version, it says, put away evil from your flesh, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Put away habits that can destroy you, basically. Put away the pain from your body. Put away the evil from your flesh and put away habits that will destroy you. It seems like a rite of passage for many young people to drink and smoke once they become teenagers or they will want to experiment with drugs and sex. Lives that are not responsibly, responsibly lived without God especially, can bring about pain and suffering for the rest of our lives. You want to enjoy life better in the year 2022? Well, this short passage of four verses tells us, tell us that life will have light and light and dark days. There will be bumps on the road. There will be highs and lows for the believers as well. But there is a difference if you know the Lord. You know there is a God purpose behind your suffering and your blessings. What we have to do is to live reverently in the ways of God and clean up your act. Get rid of the habits and behaviour that bring pain and blinding anger and bitterness. Enjoy life. Enjoy all the days while you still have whatever youth and vigour. But live responsibly for we have to account to the Lord. We move forward, you know, as you move, just flip the page to Ecclesiastes chapter 2, it basically, uh, chapter 12 basically, it basically tells us to make the best choices in life you can in regards to God. As early as possible, because the grey hairs are coming and the wrinkles will start to show and when your legs will start to tremble and your eyesight fails, and your teeth will get gaps and or fall off and the grave isn't that too far off. Remember your Creator every day. Enjoy the simple pleasures of life like a sunset or sunrise and live responsibly before God. That is what we have to do in 2022. Let's go look to the Lord in prayer. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you, have given, you had given wisdom to King Solomon. And whilst he wasted many, many years of his life, he came back to you and he, he had wisdom to teach us through your word in Ecclesiastes that life is vanity, life is meaningless and all the toil of our lives under the sun, not above the sun with you, you know, they are just vanity. But God... You have given us abundant life and with you we can face all the dark days and we can enjoy all the light. We can enjoy simple pleasures of life. Light is sweet, God. And I thank you that you have given us vigour, you have given us energy and we are to live for you. We are to live reverently and God, for one day we will give an account to you. And God, help us to cast away vexation of spirit, vexation of anger and resentment. Just put all the habits that are dark and that are evil for our flesh away. And I praise you, God, that you are going to walk with us through the end of 2021 until you return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.